Hi everybody, welcome back to the Jen Story YouTube channel with me, Jen. Hope you're all doing okay. Today's activity is going to be a messy play one and it's going to carry on the love and friendship theme that I've got running through February. So what I'm going to do for today's messy play activity is scale back messy play. And I'm conscious that I have done a lot of sensory and messy play activities on Gensory, but I haven't really talked about the kind of key stages that you would follow in presenting sensory play to children and learners. Um, and this one really lends itself to that. Now you will notice in a lot of my videos that I have a little jug of water, and there is a reason for that because that instantly changes the consistency of what we're providing for our learner. So that's why that's there. Um, but as I say, this one is gonna really, really focus in on three distinct phases that we can introduce our learner to. Now, as I always mention, it's about knowing your learner, knowing what they can tolerate, what they like, what they don't like from the outset. And these kind of activities are gonna do that. But if you're starting from scratch, uh, with a new learner or you haven't done messy play before then start at the beginning start at the stage one that I'm going to kind of talk about in a minute and then work your way through um, because that's going to build up the tactile profile in quite a structured way now if you know your child or learner really 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 well um, you might think actually they just love messy play it doesn't really matter you might be able to go straight in at stage three and a lot of teachers do they know their learners really well they know actually that they've got a high tolerance for all kinds of different sensory experiences and that's when we can do that building of the tactile profile that I talk about all the time um, and giving them lots of different things to access and things to experience. But if you're working with a learner that might be a little bit what we probably call tactile defensive, um, you've got to start at the beginning and you've got to introduce it slowly. And as I always say, if you bring the joy to these activities and you model that joy to your learner, then you're halfway there. That is such an important thing. Um, so yeah, I'll talk you through all the things that we can do with this really, really nice activity now. So as always, I'm using really, really simple to find resources that you can locate really, really easily and are really cheap. Um, so we're starting off with a gentry favourite. This is Nesquik powder. Um, it's just the stuff that you mix into milkshakes. You can get it in chocolate, banana and strawberry. There might be some other flavours now, but I don't know of any. Um, so yeah, for the pink theme, we're using strawberry. The great thing about this is it's going to give that chalky dustiness. So if you're looking to kind of give your learner a sort of sandy base, Sort of experience powders are great for that and the fabulous thing about these is that a it's taste safe and b you're stimulating your olfactory sense um, and what that's going to do is build up memory because that is directly related to your memory so yeah if you're going to use this as a powder then use it consistently because it's going to kind of act as a bit of a cue really so we're going to do some messy play strawberry brilliant to that, I'm going to add some of this fabulous stuff. This is red velvet dusting. You can get it in the baking aisle. They do it in lots of different colours. It's not scented, but you've got the scent covered with an Esquik powder. What that's going to do is add a little bit of contrast to the powder. Um, and it does feel slightly different to the Nesquik powder. So you've got a double tactile experience going on there. Um, but essentially, it's just pretty. So you're going to get a really nice visual experience from that. And what we're trying to do through these kind of activities is deliver that multi-channels approach. Woo, nearly dropped it. Um, deliver that multi-channels approach to learning. So we want to kind of stimulate lots of different senses all at the same time. And what that's going to do is give you that multi-sensory integration for your learner that we're looking for. So actually, yes, they're separate channels. So hopefully it will look quite nice and visual. It will make a nice sound when they move their hands in it obviously giving us that lovely tactile experience and building up those tactile experiences. Um, but at its core, it's going to give you a multi-sensory experience that will stand alone as a thing in its own right. And then in this little ramekin here, I've just got some love hearts, just those little candy sweets. Now, when I was little, they said little messages on them and some of them do, but they've also added little emojis to them now, which kind of is a real sign of the time. That made me feel really quite old, actually. Um, but yeah, they're gonna be a nice addition to add in if you've got a, a learner who is ready for fine motor skill development. But I'll talk about using those in a minute. It might be that your learner isn't ready for those yet. Um, but yeah, so we'll add those in in a little while. Okay, so the stages of messy play. Now, traditionally, when you're doing messy play activities for the first time with a learner, 
or you're working with a learner who's not that sure about tactile play and that sensory experience, you would start with hard and dry things. So stage one is kind of that hard and dry. So this is a great one for that. It's powder based. So you would do things like dry pasta, rice, sand, anything like that. Anything that isn't too messy. So they can dust it off their hands if they want to. It's just that initial experience of getting their hands involved in something. Now I'll talk in a minute about kind of the thing, the ways that you can kind of approach that with your learner. But first and foremost, stage one is dry. Just dry stuff, hard stuff and dry stuff. So sawdust is another really great one to use. Um, so yeah, anything powdered like this is a really, really good start for stage one. Stage two is to introduce soft textures and that's going to build it up. So once you've got your learner really introduced to a wide range of different hard and dry materials, um, of which there are hundreds and hundreds when you actually think about it, but once you think they're really, really comfortable and confident with that and they explore that readily, what you can then do is create a soft thing from that. Now the great thing about these powders is that if you add a little tiny bit of water, you get a paste. So when you're moving into stage two, so we're talking about soft here, not necessarily wet, but soft. So you're talking about cooked pasta, cooked rice, that kind of stuff, for example, Play-Doh being a key one. You can make little putties out of this. So just add a little bit of water and then you're getting that kind of not too messy next stage to sensory play. But it is obviously that next step up from exploring it in a dry capacity. So just a little bit of water, make it into a putty, that's a really nice next stage to go to. And then as you can probably guess, stage three is to do proper, proper messy play. So you can add in more water to this. So you can either do it as water play if you want and add it into a kind of deep tray so that you've got scented pink water, which is always fun. Um, or you can just make it into a kind of gloopy, messy thing. But we're talking about the kind of messy play that your hands get covered in. You know, we're talking about the real sort of head to toe, real sensory experience. Um, now, understandably, some learners might not like that. Um, and that can happen for a variety of different reasons. It might be that naturally they're just not that bothered um, about it. It might be that they've had a bit of a nasty experience. It might be that they haven't had that experience of getting um, messy, really. Um, and they've just sort of been cleaned up quite quickly. It could be all kinds of sensory processing issues that might come into play. But whatever the reason is, life can sometimes be a little bit messy. So from a kind of practitioner perspective, it's good to get your learners used to that kind of stuff. Um, and that's kind of what we're aiming for and that's what we're heading towards. Um, but, and I cannot stress this enough, it, you don't want to kind of force that. So it might take months of, of children and learners being at that stage one, looking at hard and dry stuff. Um, and actually, if you're modelling that and, and bringing the joy, the hope would be that you would see some progression in that. Now I'm going to talk about the progression that you can do to help facilitate that now. So if you're sitting opposite your learner, that's always a good thing to do, FYI, um, opposite rather than next to you, they can see your facial expressions um, and you can model things to them. So it might be that sort of stage one of stage one, if you see what I mean, is just you playing with it and you modeling it because you can't deny the power of that observational stuff. Um, so if a child is watching you do it and watching you have fun, that kind of sows the seed in their brain of, hmm, actually I might quite like this. If you're working with a PMLD learner, 
that might be um, from an auditory or a tactile basis. It might be that actually the visual they find quite hard to kind of focus in or their physical limitations mean that they find it really hard to look down at the tray. But actually the great thing about powders, particularly on um, trays like this, is that they make a great noise when you're moving your hand. So from an auditory perspective alone, that might be enough to kind of inspire that enjoyment. Um, and obviously you're pairing that with the tactile experience so if they've got their hands in the tray you can kind of gently massage it but obviously always look for those communicational cues if they you can see in their facial expression that they want to kind of move their hand away and they're not sure just keep doing it on your hand and kind of massage it on your hand and kind of just show them that it's okay because um, that trepidation and that anxiety is only going to be broken down by you modelling it and you showing them that it's okay. You're essentially being that champion for them there and kind of experiencing it first. Um, it's a bit like holding their hand as you're walking through a deep dark wood. And then from there, it might be that they feel happy to support you in your exploration. So it might be that they're happy to move your hand in it. So they're not actually touching the substance, but they're still having a little bit of early exploration because they're holding your hand and moving your hand. And then that brings in that autonomy and that bit of control for them. But it's in a kind of really, really safe way. Um, and they're not thinking, oh, I'm going to get messy with this. Um, so that's a nice thing to kind of develop. Um, and then you can just sit back and just hold your hands back and just see if you get that initiation response so that whether you know whether it's kind of them physically going to grab your hand to pull it back so that you repeat an action or whether it's a verbal request so actually if you've got learners who are physically impaired and would struggle to physically reach out and grab your hand don't don't negate the pause the pause is still really important because actually you're still going to get that communication response and it might be as simple as them smiling or just kind of looking down as if to kind of go, yeah, no, do that again, that was really fun. Um, but look for those responses and always, always introduce those pauses because that's where you get the biggest communication responses. From that moment of them grabbing your hand, what can sometimes happen is that the learner can almost accidentally then fall into the tray. They can, their hand can just kind of experience it. Um, and sometimes it's nice as a facilitator to slowly kind of untangle your hand from underneath them and let that happen. Um, when that does happen, how you respond as a facilitator to that is so integral to what happens next and the progress that your learner will then make with sensory and messy play. Because if you respond to them going, oh, you know, if they burst into tears, for example, and you go, oh no, it's okay, it's okay. What we're essentially doing there is confirming for them that this wasn't a nice experience. This was a horrible experience. If we respond with joy and we respond with more role modelling, that whole bridge has been built then and they kind of go, actually this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, actually this is quite fun. Um, and that's all based on your facial expression as a parent or a facilitator. So model the joy and your learners will come along for the ride too. Last but not least, if you do have learners that are working that little bit developmentally higher, you can add these in. I'll probably refrain from using these if you've got learners um, who will mouth everything because you will have to watch them like a hawk and obviously watch them anyway. Um, but if you've got learners that are ready for kind of pincer grip stuff and all of the lovely, lovely fine motor and they've reached stage three of sort of sensory stages um, and they're happy with that really kind of wet, soft kind of uh, texture and tactile experience, you can whack these in, just sort of stick them in the messy play and get them to kind of fish them out. It's a little bit like the pirate treasure one that I did way back in the summer. Um, but yeah, you can just stick those in, they can make patterns out of them, uh, get them out, put them in, fish them out, use a spoon. Um, but yeah, they're just a really nice thing to add in to create a little bit of fine motor development. And there is my multi-sensory love powder, potion, water, whatever you want to make it into, depending on your learner. As always, have loads of fun. If you like the video today, give it a like down below, share it around, subscribe to the channel, and as always, have so much fun and let me know if you use the activity. It's always lovely to hear from any of you. So I will see you next time for a brand new video, but until then everyone, take care and I'll see you soon.